scores a goal. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary. Adelaide kick one goal in a half of footy, but still win. They've won their last three in a row. They're six on the ladder, while Port Adelaide cop an almighty spray from their coach, Ken Hinckley. It's showdown week. We're going to count down our top five showdown moments. Stay with us. You're watching Footy SA. Showdown week and where else would you rather be than your home of footy, Footy SA. Bernie, Vince, the Crows and Melbourne legend along for the ride. Loved a big showdown, did Bernard. Welcome along and he's pretty pumped up and excited. I am. Exciting week, isn't it? Showdown week. So uh, both teams, although the Crows did win, they won ugly. Both teams will be looking to put on a big show this week. It will be. I'm just not sure which way to go. Not sure who should start yeah. favourites. Probably Adelaide. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. But let's look at round seven and the Kia big moments. The V6 twin turbo Kia Stinger is the Western Australian car of the year. Let's start with Port Adelaide on Friday night. They failed a test. Oh, that start was horrific, wasn't it? It was, a, it was, a, it was not good to watch. But in saying that, their second quarter was very good and we're able to to hold with that, that first quarter deficit, but that'd be really disappointing. Such a big game in front of you know, a big crowd. Friday night footy, everyone's watching. Very disappointing. There's a test for their young players and one that they probably failed. Bernie, yep. it's not easy to be consistently uh, up to that standard that they have set. So probably as expected, but they'd be disappointed that it was so comprehensive. Yeah, they would be very disappointed. Um, but yeah, it might be, you know, you talk about the games or the, the instances or quarters that they might have needed, and it might have just been a little wake-up call for some of the players that were maybe thinking, you know, too far ahead. So, um, yeah, disappointing first quarter. Doesn't make for good reading. This is the first quarter. They conceded 20 inside 50s. You can't win games of footy with that. Minus 61 20. in disposals. Contested footy, though, a smash. Mm. Ground ball gets also, and 13 scoring shots to three. Ken Hinckley came out breathing absolute fire I liked at quarter it. time. I liked I've been it. on the end of a couple of these yeah. and it's not fun. I liked it. Yeah. I think, well, he would have been angry, surely, coming down at quarter time and, you know, he had, his, had him in his gun and, and gave it to him. I, I like that because I was sitting at home thinking, what, where do they go to mm. from here? And they so. got a response. They did, as you yeah. said, outscore Collingwood for the remaining three quarters. One of the players that was on the end of that spray from Ken Hinckley was Ollie Wines. He had 28 disposals, Bernie, but... It was a poor night from Ollie, just kicked it at 11%, one effective kick on the night. And he's got to stand up and improve his kicking because it's been an area of his game that's letting down for a while now. Yeah, some uncharacteristic, crucial errors from Ollie on the weekend and uh, some that resulted in opposition goals and I think that's what we, what we remember. So, um, yeah, he'd be disappointed with that, but Ollie, he'll be, he'll be yeah. back this week. He'll, he'll really set himself for a big showdown and he'll, he'll bounce back. That's the one there for me. You, you're 30 metres out, you're the captain of the footy club, you've got to go back and kick a captain's goal. Just yep. thought he, uh, he was too, um, wanted to handle the ball too much was seeing that there. That one there led to a, a Collingwood goal. He came off the ground and he was visibly destroyed, Ollie. Yeah, he knew that he'd play yeah. a poor game. And as you say, he's a proud person and you'd expect him to respond for yeah, this week. Yeah, he, he'd be as disappointed as anyone and he's a very proud guy, as you mentioned. So he'll be back this week and he'll, he'll play a big game. But it was interesting to see him. Did you see him huddled over? Yeah. He almost had a moment to himself. He was just so disappointed. Mm. So... Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how, how players do take that. Yeah, and I look forward to his response this week. Now, Adelaide, they've won their last three. Are you convinced that they're back? They won ugly on the weekend. Well, I said they'd win their next three yes, leading into the show. Did. You did. But I wasn't convinced, no. But do you, if you're playing this team that's second on the ladder, you take a win, ugly, yep. beautiful, perfect, whatever, you take the win. So I'm sure they'll be just, they just had to win leading into a showdown, and, that, and, and they did it ugly, but they did it. Look at the score two minutes to go. That was the man that did it, Eddie Betts, with that freak goal, and he's got a great record in showdowns, Eddie Betts. Port yeah. Adelaide haven't been able to stop him, so whoever gets that job is going to be uh, in for a, or has their work cut out for them. The other one is the Crouch brothers, who are probably one and two with Alex Keith, three in the Crows' best and fairest right now, but all they do without these two. Oh, yeah, they're, they're on fire, aren't they? And they... It's hard. To, I'm trying to keep them out of my votes, Kane, but it's too hard to keep them out. I've got to keep putting them in. So um, they're on fire, mate. They're, and they, can, they find the footy, they use it well, um, and it's so important for that midfield. Just like to see them get a few more 
forward half positions. Yep. They they do um, get a lot of their, their kicks down back. I'd like to see them hit the scoreboard a little bit more, some more inside 50s. But uh, apart from that, it's hard to, hard to knock them. Yeah, that's fair enough. And it'll be a great battle in the midfield for the showdown this week. Let's have a look at their numbers this year. And have they, well, are they in career best form? Because you look... At their disposals, Bernie, they're up on disposals this year from 2017. Remembering that Brad didn't play a game last year, tackles down a little bit, as are clearances, and they're inside 50s, as you say. That's the area that they could probably improve on, but what a side it is to have Brad Crouch back in that midfield after missing so much footy next year. Bernie loves it at the plasma. He's there for the Kia Top 7. Kia is home to Australia's best seven-year factory warranty. Usually he's got me in his hit list. I'm hoping it's not the case today. No, I've left you alone tonight. You said that last week. I've left you alone. And then I was alone. number one. I've left you alone, but if you keep that up, I'll right. put you back in. <laughs> I can do that. You can. Right, I want to start with a good story, good, feel good story. Little Kyron, who yeah. um, is really sick at the moment. The Collingwood football, and football clubs do this so well yep. these days, Kane. Got him down to the footy club during the week, made him feel part of the team, and you know, his dad was in tears, and and, and just to, to see the look on the kid's face was so good by the footy club. What about this? I want to touch on this. Holding the ball free kick is Tell gone. me you paid that. Com no, Tell me that it. was holding the ball. Did not oh, pay it. Oh, hang your head in shame. It. Anyway, I'll get back to that in a minute. We've we got to respect champions when they... 250, well done, even though disappointing. Well done, He's 250. in the votes too. Played and he's well. coming for you, Kane. He told me he's going to yeah. play 301 yeah. just to beat you. <laughs> my boy! My boy! Oh, Alex, he can do everything, this kid. <laughs> Since I've picked him in my team, he's kicking goals. He can play anywhere. <laughs> right, who we got next? Oh, yeah, this is, a, this is a good one. Hit the post. Hit the post or miss it. Miss well, it. pick one. What do you no, want us to do? They don't care. They just that, don't care. Collingwood cheer squad, that's... Um, They're not that bright. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, I was going to mention that? that but, uh, what is this? Bryce Gibbs, oh, yeah, selfie. Nah. This, this was me watching the Crows oh. game yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't one for the ages, but no. I just want to talk about it. when With fame and, you know, you go on footy shows and stuff. Oh, no. So oh, I mean, <laughs> you spoke <laughs> up. <laughs> Mate, there you are getting is. way ahead of yourself. No. And you'll do anything for free. And have a look at this. No, that it's is... Not, I don't even that know is a, like the haircut. That is a favour for Robbie Gray, fellow barber, owns a barber shop, so went in there. I was going to leave you out, you know, until you started playing oh, me at the start. But I knew you were going to put me in. the Kia Top 7. That is the Kia Top 7. <laughs> I'm going to do this next week. We've got to have Bernie in our sights. In fact, I might line him up a little bit later on in the program. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a close look at the biggest showdown moments in the history. Malcolm White inducts another member into his Hall of Fame. You are watching Footy SA, thanks to Kia, home to Australia's best seven-year factory warranty, and OTR, who are making life easy. Well, Bernie's been here for seven minutes, but he will not leave the plasma. He loves a bit of me time. It's the OTR takeaway. Kick goals and tackle life's problems close to the siren with OTR and their 24-hour convenience. A Crow speedster you were I pretty do. impressed with. I want to talk about Brody Smith and the correlation between him being back in form and the Crows yep. being back in form. Have a look at this line-breaking speed from him. Ball's in a contest, flicks it out. Have a look at this. Bang, he breaks the lines, clean. Brody Smith. He's clean. Breaks the lines and still going as well, follows up. I think this one finishes in a point, but look at the scoring opportunity it creates. Another one here in a minute where he follows up. The, it's, it's a second effort, but you have a look at his line-breaking speed. He starts even here with Conker. Watch this. Bang, he's got 5, 10 metres already on him. And this is a good finish too from Brody Smith. One of Snap. the best goals kicks in the Especially game. Especially when goals are hard to come by. But yep. his, his correlation with his form and the Crows being back in form is why they're going so well at the moment. And his line-breaking speed breaks the game open for him. Yeah, and if there's three players at Port Adelaide that I want to shut down from the Crows, it's Laird, it's Smith and it's Lynch. Yep. And he was back in form as well, Tom he Lynch. Was. 29 disposals he had. As a forward, that's amazing. He's, that, that's midfield numbers for Tom Lynch, but perhaps started the season a little bit slow, but love him as a player. Probably still underrated in the competition. Gets up on the logos, marks the footy, uses the ball really well. You just look at the ground that he covers. So I know a lot of teams, in particular Geelong, who have had good success against Adelaide, they come to shut down Tom Lynch almost in a tagging role. So. But it's good, as you say, uh, he's crucial and a barometer for them as well. Yeah, he's a real connector, isn't he? He's that guy that gets up the ground, connects, gets yep. it into the forward line, and um, he works super, super hard. His numbers are really good running-wise, GPS numbers, and 
um, there's, he's been back in form as well. And it's, it's the correlation with those sort of players that I'm with you. If, you, if I'm looking to shut mm. down Adelaide, I'm, I'm looking at the connecting players, the Lynches, the Brody Smiths that breaks yep. the line, maybe a, a Brad Crouch. I know you can't stop everyone, but certainly got to put time into them. Finally, the Crows have some selection issues as well and some real headaches on their hands as Don Pike sits in his match committee later on this week. Jenkins, Himmelberg, then to go there again. Jenkins didn't have an influence or a big one certainly on Friday night for Norwood. Just uh, the 14 disposals, no goals. And Riley O'Brien has improved as well. He has. I think he's had... That was a bit of a breakout yeah. game for, for big Riley. But, um, yeah, he might even, might even get him your votes later, Kane. I'm mm. just... I'm just working that out at the moment. But yeah, he was good. Big presence, 44 hit outs, some good marks around the ground and um, yeah, he'll be certainly looking to back that up again in a big game this week. You were strong last week that they should hold with Himmelberg and probably the right caller. And I'm of the belief that Jenkins probably got to go back and kick a big bag. Mm. You know, a bag of four or five in the sample before they get him back. So it's hard to imagine that they'll pick him this week off no goals. Yeah, hard to, hard to pick. And, and I, I, I've said it all along that I think It'd be silly for the Adelaide Footy Club to pick him out of form because mm. it, you get back in the same position. Wait till he puts a few numbers yep. together or a few good games together before you pick him. So then he, well, he comes in in really good form. It's fair to him as well. So um, interesting times ahead for Josh. Everyone holding their breath to see who Bernie's got in his Repco votes this week. Your local mechanic with the national white backing of Repco. Book your next car service at repcoservice.com.au. Five this week, Rory Sloan. Rory Sloan. Thought he was very good. Matt Crouch, Tom Lynch, the connector we were just yep. touching on before. Riley O'Brien, who had that... That breakout game on the weekend, and uh, and I managed to get Brad Crouch. I couldn't leave Brad Crouch out again, but there were some unlucky players. Probably Ellis Yolman, your man Laird. You're always into me about not putting Laird <laughs> yeah, well, in. you never do. Yeah, well, until he has more of an influence, he won't get in Gee, there. But He's a hard and, man. My boy Alex Keith, I nearly got him in, but... No, I, can't, I can only pick five. I can't pick any more than well, that. Well, we'll have a look at the leaderboard later on. Get the feeling it's dominated by the Crows after we look at the Port Adelaide game, which is coming up. Also coming up as well is this, Malcolm Blight's Hall of Fame. It's all thanks to Amy. This is the most prestigious Hall of Fame that you can get in. Lucky you're with Amy. Lucky you're in Blighty's Hall of Fame. Who is it this week? A lot of the inductees in Blighty's Hall of Fame have been skinny kids to start with. Mark Rusciuto's not one of them. Mark had a beautiful build, wonderful skills, great mark, great kick, but he was also an aggressive player. He was a battering ram. There are a lot of people in the AFL that have got bruises from Mark Rusciuto. Cousins a kick, bang, down he goes from Rusciuto. Pre-season at the Crows in the first season. Had a conversation with him and talked to him about if he kept on banging his body into other people all the time, he would have a very short career. So I asked him to actually start playing the ball a bit more. What I got was the hardest trainer probably at the Adelaide Football Club. His aggression at training was fantastic, but he started to turn it in a really good way, and that is at the ball. There's no doubt that Mark Rusciuto is in the top three players of the Adelaide Crows of all time. He had a wonderful ability to get the ball, beautiful hands to mark it. But the thing I loved about him was his magnificent kick, either for goal or for a teammate. He had sublime skills. There's no doubt in my time at the club, you could see the leadership qualities in Mark. He was a leader of the young men at the club, and even the older blokes started to listen to him. There is no doubt in history that he was one of the great captains of the Adelaide Crows. In 2003, Mark Rusciuto won football's highest individual honour, the Brownlow Medal. Mark Rusciuto, welcome to Blighty's Hall of Fame. Surprises there. Maybe the only surprise is that it took him seven weeks to get in. That was Blighty's Hall of Fame. Lucky you are with Amy Wanganine Hart, Corns McLeod, Robin Bradley, Mark Rusciuto. Who will be the eighth inductee? We'll find out next week. And we'll also find out next the top five greatest showdown moments. Extraordinary that Bernie Vince has demanded, demanded <laughs> to be in the top five. We'll do that from the plasma when we come back.
Thanks for your company on Footy SA. Showdown week. We're counting down the top five showdown moments in the history of the showdown. It's pretty tough to get on this list, but want to start with number five. This is one of my favourites. Showdown number one, Bernie. You could not get in the doors. Look at the Mexican wave. They love it. And before a ball was even bounced, this oh, yeah. happened. Our boy Scotty Cummings and, and Rod Jamison, who's on the board, just went at it. How good is that? You don't see this anymore. That's very good, but I don't think any landed, did they? Not sure, like but Darryl I think Wakeland they both the got three or four weeks each. Port Adelaide win the first showdown. They were the underdogs. They got it done. This is emotional scenes. This is the Phil Walsh showdown, of course. Phil Walsh had such an influence at both clubs. And once again, it was so tight. Adelaide leading comfortably just before three-quarter time. Port Adelaide come back. And then Adelaide, look at it, three points. They hold on. Amazing scene. Scott Thompson wins the only showdown medal in the history of it. How about this one, Bernie? This is your showdown. No, this is no, not. not yet. This is not, not your showdown. This is the showdown <laughs> final where this my clown of a brother said it would be a dream to play Adelaide in a final. But this is the one. This is the bloodbath. Ooh, this is the one Bernie demanded be on the show because he won the medal and he yeah, survived yeah. the bloodbath because you were just out there oh, collecting the cheap kicks, getting uncontested <laughs> marks. You win the showdown, but you had about two players left. Yeah, well, there's, it was whoever was left standing, mate. And you still won. So, you can and we see just there. held on, yeah. Birdman's there, young David McKay. But number one, it's got to be a port moment. It's my top five, so oh, stuff, you, stuff you, stuff oh, you, Cruz. My oh, man, Angus Monfries, the wizard, goes on the left foot. Watch this ball bounce. That is Bang, just, that's a goal. Just, no. Moments later, Chad Wingard kicks the sealer. He's no longer with us, Chad. He's at Hawthorne and battling, but he kicked the sealer and Port Adelaide win the most famous showdown. Get involved on social media at Footy SA on Twitter and also Facebook for your favourite showdown memories. It's going to be another massive week. Hey, speaking of Port Adelaide, Michael Voss spoke to SENSA today. He dissected the form on Friday night, but then also had an eye to Saturday showdown. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we didn't put up much fight in the, in the first quarter, which was um, pretty disappointing. Yeah, you know, obviously the opposition become a factor as well and uh, they were sure ready to go and ready to bring the contest and we we're off in that area and they were able to dominate the scoreboard as a result. Form one's drawn over uh, over weeks, not one week. Um, you know, we, we can't, you can't be a football team that, um, you know, just drives what you do based on whether you win or lose. I mean, we have to be better than that. We have to address what happened from last week and, uh, and get a shift and we expect a response. There wasn't many winners on Friday night. Time now to look at the votes from that game for Repco, your local mechanic with the nationwide backing at Repco. Book your next car service at repcoservice.com.au. That, oh, that is, that is wow. grim. That's a record. That is grim. You've wow. gone with just two players. Yeah, I thought Justin Westhoff and Travis Boak, the only two players that could hold their hand up and say they performed to a reasonable level on You've Friday night. You've outdone me. You've there there, them. there is the me. leaderboard. Brad Crouch, Travis Bogue having an outstanding year. Rory Sloan on the back of his five from yesterday's game. Matt Crouch and Tom Rockliffe sneaking into the top five. Sneaking into the studio is Nathan Brown for sports bet for all AFL matches this round. If your team, no, just Friday and Saturday. Must have cost the boys some money at sports bet. <laughs> just Friday and Saturday. If they go 12 up, you win. Conditions apply, of course. It's got up a few times. Yeah. Just the Friday and Saturday yes. games now. But I went into the Port Adelaide uh, team meeting the night before with uh, when they're eating. You did and uh, they were eating uh, like um, Lasagna? sweet potato. Like, oh, who eats oh. sweet potato the night before a game? That's why they lost. Sweet yeah. potato. It's just a good old fashioned spaghetti no, bolognese the night before a game. That's what you ate before a yeah. game. Yeah. It's what normal people eat, isn't it? Fair enough. Hey, that's interesting. Certainly is. Now this is what it was last week, and uh, Port Adelaide have drifted from the two out to the two dollars ten. The Crows have come into a dollar seventy two. The uh, the line is only four and a half, so pretty much inconsequential the line. Let's have a look at the next one, which is a big win, little win. One to thirty nine here. One to thirty nine here. Eight of the last ten showdowns have been that market. There's been two blowouts in that time, but eight of the last ten have been between one and thirty nine. So I reckon that's where I'll be playing on the day. So it's going to be a fantastic showdown. Uh, premiership market, Geelong were $4 this morning, so money for the Cats today. The Pies are there, Port Adelaide and Adelaide, as you can see, but uh, certainly everybody else is $10 and below. The rising star, I still reckon Connor Rosie can win it. I still reckon he can get on a run, and he's some pretty good odds at the moment. Sam Walsh has to probably get injured to lose it, but I think it's his to lose at the moment. Everybody else, I don't think, can win it. Are ah, down to those two. And then, what else have I got? The Sandville Premiership market, I saw Norwood lost their first game after being 33 points up to Adelaide on the weekend.
weekend. Can anybody win this? Is it Norwoods? Is it Adelaide? Tigers haven't won since 1986, Brownie. I'm just hoping that Glenelg can get up. And those odds, I like them. That was the first year Stephen Kernahan came over that to is right. Carlton. That is right. That's a long time ago. Ma massive long Stephen time. Kernahan. Really good mullet that yeah. you used to have. <laughs> <laughs> Gamble responsibly. Browdy, well played. Off to the break. We're coming back with something amazing that this guy did on TV, on national TV. Oh, no. You've got to see it to believe it. Problems. <laughs> One and five. Contested ball. <laughs> now, now, Bernie, when, when you're on TV, producers come up with stupid ideas. You, you, you're inexperienced at this. You can say no. So this is your acting on Fox Footy. They've come to you with this, and you thought, yeah, I, I can't say no. So you, you, you're carrying on like a clown. Next time. You can say no. Don't you start about <laughs> not saying no, mate. I saw your haircut promo you did before. But I was just happy I spelled everything right. Yeah, you, know, take. you did, but Ability they, could, they to couldn't tough. use you, Melbourne. Um, you are watching Footy SA, of course, for Kia Home to Australia's best seven-year factory warranty. Time now for the Balfour's Sandful update. Now, how good's this promo? The Balfour's Take a Specky promotion is on now. Enter today. Let's have a look at it, because it makes good reading if you're a... Glenelg fan, clearly. But Adelaide, your boys, Adelaide. did well. I don't think Nord kicked a goal in the second half, did they? And Adelaide come from behind, so they'd be pretty happy with that. But Nord, you keep telling me Nord were unbeatable. I thought they were, mm. but they are. So uh, they're still going OK. Port Adelaide had a pretty good win as well. Sturt going OK. North Adelaide struggling. Let's have a look at the ladder. Um, and there it is, Nord right at the top. Glenelg, Adelaide, surprisingly, two and three. South Adelaide and Port Adelaide rounding out the top five. Now, don't forget the Balfour's Taker Specky promotion is on now. Share your perfect footy moment at balfours.com.au. North Adelaide just on the negative two still, I see. They are. That's rough. <laughs> That's bizarre. That is rough. Is that Can still... they finish the season on negative two? Has that ever two? happened? It'd be a record. I don't know, that no one will ever do that again. So a... let's just, oh, not... Hope they lose, but it'll be funny. Massive fall from grace. Hey, uh, don't forget, you can catch up on all the best bits of the show on the SEN app. Download it today and uh, tune in also. You can pick your SEN station and all the news and vision there as well. Bernie, showdown. It's big. Adelaide, big Port Adelaide. Week. Can't wait. Two teams that are probably not coming off their best weekends, but... You know, it doesn't matter how you're going or where you're sitting on the ladder in showdowns. I just hope it's a real Who wins? Physical Get contested. off the fence. Who wins? I'm not going to say Port Adelaide, am I? Adelaide. Adelaide we might win. have a little bet on this, mate. We might. Oh, we fair. might. Port Adelaide win for me. 13 points. Come on the power. It's showdown week. Come Get on the Enjoy it. We'll dissect it next Monday night. <laughs>